Hello and welcome to the lecture on Lighthouse Project at Lucknow. My name is Shailesh Agarwal, Executive Director, BMTPC, and I'm going to educate you all through this presentation about the field-level implementation of innovative construction system being used in this LHP, including design, basis, materials, manufacturing, structural drawings, detailing, and actual site photographs explaining the different construction stages. The outline of my uh, presentation is as follows. Starting from Global Housing Technology Challenge and Lighthouse Projects, the technology in terms of various structural elements, namely foundation system, structural system, floor, uh, roof slab, wall panels, will be discussed followed by construction activities at site. Global Housing Technology Challenge India was organized by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs to mainstream uh, and identify proven demonstrable uh, construction systems which can help build maximum number of houses in minimum time and minimum cost. Uh, construction Technology India Expo was organized uh, on 2nd and 3rd March 2019, which was inaugurated by Honorable Prime Minister of India. And uh, through that Construction Technology India Expo, uh, we could create a basket of 54 innovative construction systems, which are broadly categorized into these uh, six categories. Today, we are going to discuss a stay in place formwork system, which is being used in the Lighthouse project at Lucknow. Uh, just to give you the brief summary of the Lighthouse projects, which are currently being implemented in, uh, in these six states, uh, in these six uh, respective uh, cities, as you can see, all the six broad categories are uh, uh, being implemented uh, with the distinct technologies at each place. And uh, all these lighthouse projects comprise of uh, more than 1,000 houses, uh, varying from six story to 14 uh, story. Uh, the project at Lucknow uh, is briefly discussed now. Uh, there are uh, four blocks. Uh, this is uh, one block, uh, this is second block, this is third block, and this is fourth block. And the, uh, there are 1,040 houses with basic and social infrastructure. Uh, the, the, the green space which you see in between is uh, around 13%. And this is the typical uh, floor plan. And at each floor, uh, there are 16 dwelling units uh, with provisions of lifts as well as staircases. The typical dwelling unit uh, plan of, uh, of a house uh, you can see here, as you see, uh, it comprises of uh, one living room, uh, one bedroom, a kitchen, a balcony, a bathroom, and a WC. And uh, you can have uh, separate access from uh, both the rooms. Also, I would like to mention here that uh, the sizes of the uh, rooms, kitchen, uh, conforms to uh, National Building Code of 2016, which specifies space norms and height of uh, you know, dwelling units for uh, EWS category. Uh, there are other special uh, features which uh, need to be mentioned here. Uh, the projects are being rated uh, under the green rating system uh, of GRIHA. Uh, the use of renewable resources in terms of rainwater harvesting and uh, solar uh, lighting is also included in the project. Uh, solid waste management and sewage treatment plant with recycling of wastewater uh, is also part and parcel of the project lighthouse project at Lucknow. Uh, all these projects uh, are complying with the firefighting uh, norms as given in National Building Code of India. The technology, uh, first I will explain you in in, in generic form, the technology being used here, and then uh, uh, we will uh, go to the specifics about this project. Uh, all of us know that the equivalent construction systems which exist world over are of two types. One is load bearing structure where load bearing walls are constructed by brick laying and then a cast in situ RCC slab or uh, uh, truss slope roof. The other system which is uh, prevalent uh, is RCC, a framed structure where cast in C2 RCC columns and beam are 
cast and then RCC cast in uh, C2 uh, slab is uh, late and then uh, walls are infilled with burnt clay brick or any other kind of brick. These two systems are no longer sustainable and uh, most of the projects you find time overrun and cost overrun. Also, uh, the, there is a huge amount of wastage. Uh, the construction is slow track construction and also uh, there is uh, dust pollution, noise pollution uh, leading to greenhouse gas emissions as well. So it is time that we uh, shift to new innovative construction systems which are proven and being practiced world over successfully. So here uh, we are replacing these uh, conventional system by uh, this system uh, wherein uh, the, the frame uh, structural frame is of steel. So what we are doing this cast in situ RCC beam and RCC column and beam are being replaced by these factory made steel built up sections and the wall, which is here of brick or any other block, is being replaced by uh, stay in uh, place PVC uh, wall form system. This stay in uh, place uh, uh, form work system, I will explain you in detail, but it's a temporary shuttering. Uh, it, is, it is not like a temporary shuttering, which is adopted in conventional system, where we put the shuttering and then later we remove the shuttering. Here it stays permanently with the structure to later act as integral part of the structure. Uh, also, uh, here, this built up section, so the, these built up sections of steel are uh, manufactured uh, in the, the steel plant, and these are built up section, and then uh, transported to the site, assembled through nut and bolt systems, and then this infill, uh, and then these uh, infill walls uh, in form of stay in place PVC wall form are placed to complete the structure. Uh, in terms of structural elements, as you can see, the slide here on the right hand side um, uh, shows uh, you the different structural elements of, of a typical building. Uh, starting from this is a foundation, then we have a column, this is a column, and then the, this is a beam, and then this is a slab, and this is a wall panel. So in conventionally, we do everything uh, at the site where uh, reinforcement cage is laid, then uh, uh, shuttering is placed, then concrete is poured, then shuttering is removed, and uh, then uh, the shuttering for beam is uh, placed, then reinforcement cage is placed, then reinforcement for slab is placed, and then beam and slab are cast together, then the shuttering is removed, and then uh, uh, you know uh, the bricks are laid to you know construct infill walls. So this is a time-consuming process, and uh, can we substitute this cast in uh, C2 system by something which is done in the factory. So here, uh, if we can make these beams and columns in the factory, if we can make these uh, slabs also in the factory and then just uh, put them at the site and assemble them, uh, then you can save not only on uh, the, the, the time, but it will also save on cost and you will get a affordable uh, quality uh, you know, construction. Uh, so I will, uh, with regard to this project, uh, I will explain you the te uh, technologies being used for foundation structural system. Uh, let me also tell you the structural system means the skeleton of a building and the structural system means the column beam uh, framing system. So here we are using a steel uh, uh, framing system, which I will explain you. Uh, floors are also composite uh, depth floors, which also will, will be explained to you. And for wall panels, we are using an innovative uh, system, which is a stain place PVC uh, wall form. So overall, the, the uh, construction uh, system being used uh, at Lighthouse Project in Lucknow is hybrid construction comprising of steel frame uh, steel framed structure with PVC uh, wall forms as infill walls. Uh, so first and foremost thing is uh, the, the foundation. So here in this project, the foundation is conventional, which is uh, as per the geotechnical investigations, uh, safe bearing capacity, sub, uh, surface soil strata, uh, water table. 
for the uh, Lucknow project because it's a high risk structure. Um, the raft foundation is uh, being uh, designed, and uh, uh, this is a typical uh, setup of uh, RCC raft, and over which uh, you know uh, stem columns are put, and at the plinth level, all the columns are connected together with the RCC plinth uh, beam and a great slab. Uh, to have uh, integral uh, monolithic action. So foundation is conventional, then structural system, as I explained to you, we are replacing the conventional RCC frame by these built up fabricated eye sections, which are fabricated in a typical um, steel plant. And these are built up section. Uh, they can be coated, they can be galvanized, and uh, there are other things as well. But here we are using a hot roll uh, built up fabricated eye section for beams and columns. So this is a typical uh, eye. This is a typical uh, um, you know, beam, and this is a typical um, column, uh, which are, uh, you know, uh, fabricated and uh, you know uh, manufactured in the factory and then transported to the site and assembled at the site through nut and bolt connections as far as floor is concerned here uh, uh, in the steel structural system you can use any kind of flow but here we are using a flow which is called a deck flow so in a deck floor, it comprises of a deck sheet. What you see here, this is a deck sheet. It's a profile uh, sheet of steel and uh, over which you put a reinforcement and then you do the concrete. So you can see this is a profile deck sheet that over this, uh, this kind of reinforcement is put, uh, which is as per structural design. And then uh, the, the concrete screed is uh, being laid. Uh, the innovative system being used here is the wall. Uh, that, so wall here is stay in place PVC wall form system. I will try to explain you what is a stay in place and what is PVC uh, form work. A stay in place means normally uh, if you see the conventional construction system, uh, their form work is put formwork is mainly of a steel or uh, wood and that form work is afterwards once the concreting is done is removed. Uh, here in this innovative system, this formwork is not removed and it acts as a part of uh, structure. And for this technology, which we are using in Lucknow, as you can see, this is a uh, this first acts as a formwork because we put a concrete inside, so it helps uh, uh, you know in concrete casting. And later, because this formwork is not removed, this acts as a wall. And this is a PVC. This is a PVC pre-finished wall. So you can uh, use this wall as it is without plastic and without anything else. Also, um, you know, uh, these PVC wall forms can be uh, customized. They can be cut to any form because uh, uh, these uh, uh, walls, uh, wall panels are made through an extrusion process, which comprises of two layers, uh, the substrate inner and the modifier, the outer layer. And uh, both the, uh, the inner and outer layers are co extruded during the manufacturing process to create a solid profile. Here in this uh, lighthouse project at Lucknow, we are using this uh, PVC wall form uh, as infill wall panel, but it can also be used as a load bearing uh, wall panel. And when you use it as a load bearing wall panel, you can, uh, you know, uh, fill this uh, core which you see uh, with the concrete and, uh, you know, in these cavities, you can put the reinforcement depending upon the requirement. Let me just show you how simple is the manufacturing process of stay in place PVC form work system. There is a simple machine. And as I told you, this is an extrusion process. So you put a material and then um, uh, through, through this machine, these profiles are being uh, extruded and uh, um, being put in this kind of uh, form. And these, you know, being hollow in uh, hollow wall panels, uh, you can fill uh, it up depending upon your application with the lightweight concrete or, uh, um, you know, nominal concrete uh, of a specified Great and also can uh, can, can be put with uh, reinforcement in horizontal and vertical uh, directions. Just to give you an idea uh, about the thickness and width of these panels, as you can see, um, in Lucknow Lighthouse project, we are using uh, our technology uh, where we are using a 126 mm uh, thick uh, panel. There are two kinds of panel. External walls are 126 mm thick, whereas internal walls are 64 mm thick. Um, uh, there is a, you know, this PVC wall form is uh, 3 mm. 
uh, on both the sides. So the uh, inner uh, the, the, the thickness of the core is 120 mm and uh, 60 mm, and uh, whereas the weight of this panel uh, with concrete is around 8.5 kg per meter uh, for external walls and 4.25 kg per meter uh, for internal walls. So this panel can be easily handled. It can be easily uh, you know put at the side, and all these panels come with tongue and groove kind of system. So you have a you know the width of these panel is 300 or uh, or 250 mm, and again uh, these panels can be customized as per uh, the requirement. But in Lucknow we are using uh, these specifications along with this uh, width. So these uh, panels uh, uh, because they come up to the height uh, of three meters, so they, these panels are you know put uh, one you know side by side uh, of each other uh, using uh, and tongue, tongue and groove system and uh, just to create a, a, a wall. This is just a technical specification sheet because we are using PVC. So, so sometimes questions are raised about its fire rating and its flammability. So as you can see from this technical sheet, um, uh, uh, it has the fire rating from 90 to uh, uh, 90 minutes to that is one and a half hours to two, 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 two hours. And normally for a residential building, we require a fire rating of um, the one hour. The, 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 uh, the, 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 there are other things um, like it's uh, you can get this uh, PVC wall form because these are pre-finished wall forms so uh, they come in different colors uh, they, it is water resistant as well and it's um, the, the density of this panel is around 30 in 100 kg per meter cube as regards its life is concerned um, it's, its life is um, uh, around 50 uh, uh, years uh, uh, as claimed by the manufacturers and as i've been telling you these systems are customized so it's not only that you will get it in um, some specified uh, thicknesses uh, this can be made um, as per your requirement so um, uh, there, there are a number of uh, thicknesses depending upon uh, your uh, uh, you know uh, application also uh, uh, there are a number of tests which have been conducted on uh, these pvc wall form uh, to comply with various uh, national international standards such as acoustic performance sound transmission what about the insulation green rating um, ignability flame propagation heat release and all those kind of uh, things to understand the functional performance so these panels pre-finished wall um, panels are um, you know as far as functional parameters are uh, concerned in terms of thermal insulation and in terms of uh, acoustics they they feel um, uh, as good as your um, you know conventional uh, brick system now, um, as I told you earlier, that uh, this PVC wall form acts as a permanent uh, formwork, which is left in the structure um, to later act as a, a concrete uh, wall. And these, uh, you know, because it comes in a, um, uh, as you can see here, this is a 300 meter, uh, 300 millimeter wide. So this can be just, you know, through a tongue and groove system. It's called slide and lock system. So it can simply be inserted here and uh, and can be snugly placed with the other panel. And uh, like this you can put uh, different uh, wall panels up to the height of the um, your uh, floor you can put them to form a wall and once these uh, panels are laid then from side you can put the reinforcement uh, horizontal reinforcement and from top you can put the vertical reinforcement depending upon your requirement and then you can do the uh, the completion so uh, this slide and interlock system uh, create a continuous wall formwork, uh, 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 which uh, acts as two phases of wall: external face and the internal uh, face. And uh, you know uh, the web members. Uh, uh, this is called web. These web members are punched with oval shaped cores to allow easy flow of concrete between the components. There are uh, several advantages, um, uh, you know, of uh, stain place PVC formwork system. Uh, first of all, uh, it, 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 it serves the dual purpose. First, it acts as a formwork and then later it acts as a wall. And secondly, it, it comes from the factory. It's a pre-finished or it's a finished product which comes from the factory. So there is no need of plaster. There is no need to finish uh, anything. This These walls once erected and filled with the lightweight concrete or uh, um, and reinforcement, they, they, these walls are ready to use. And uh, as you can see, this is a rigid PVC. Um, the, 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 the finishes, you know, the, the outer layers are PVC, the rigid PVC finishes, so they do not corrode. 
chip or a stain and they are resistant to UV, bacteria and fungi, thus ensuring long life of uh, structure. The PVC being used um, in this formwork uh, is up to 55% recycled. Um, in, uh, recycle, is having 55% uh, recycled content and can further be recycled uh, level. So making it a green sustainable uh, material. Also, you know, in a coastal region um, where you will find that, that uh, normally the bricks uh, um, normally corrode, reinforcement normally corrode. Uh, so these uh, PVC wall forms offer uh, a huge advantage because uh, of this uh, polymer encasement of the concrete. Uh, it offers higher durability and uh, lesser maintenance, thereby reducing uh, the life cycle cost. Also, uh, because you are filling the uh, concrete in between uh, the PVC components, so there, there, there is uh, no curing requirement, thereby saving the, the, the precious uh, um, natural resource that is uh, water. And I already covered that these are pre-finished uh, factory-made uh, walling system, so you don't require any plastering, and these are customized, uh, made in the factory, so as per your requirement, they can be aesthetically finished with different uh, uh, color options. Also, uh, PVC wall form panels um, offer advantages in terms of structural strength, durability, uh, enhanced weather resistance, and um, you know uh, they perform better as far as flexure, axial, and shear strengths are concerned, and uh, uh, they offer ease of construction along with functional and acoustic uh, performance. Now, if we talk about the limitation, one of the question which is being asked about the MEP, you know, the plumbing and water services. So uh, this you can say um, is a limitation that you need to plan all your services beforehand. And at a later stage, if you want to change your uh, services, um, th that is difficult to do. So um, you need to, you know, uh, decide beforehand or pre-plan uh, your uh, you know uh, mechanical electrical and uh, plumbing services and uh, everything has to be concealed because it, it has to come uh, within your pvc ball form um, it's the same is uh, true with the door and window positions because uh, later, at later stage you cannot change uh, door and window positions. Uh, uh, thirdly, um, the erection of panels because these are new innovative construction systems, uh, so erection of wall panels has to be done um, uh, under the supervision of uh, train staff. Now, this is a new technology and uh, the project which we are implementing uh, in Lucknow uh, uh, is awarded on a design and build basis and design and build basis means that uh, based on our requirements and um, specifications, uh, the agency need to um, do the structural design and then uh, construct uh, based on that uh, design. So here the agency um, is uh, uh, Jam Sustainable Housing uh, LLP, uh, which is doing this project and the technology being used is being given by Novel Assembler, that, uh, the, the technology which I just talked about, that is stain place PVC wall form system. Uh, for designing any structure, design basis report is very important because uh, that has to be formed up. And uh, once you do uh, the design based on your design basis, uh, then uh, only you can uh, prepare structural drawings. And then those structural drawings are, you know, uh, vetted by academic institutions. And once vetted, they are approved uh, for uh, construction. Uh, so the design basis for this project, it is primarily a hybrid structure comprising of uh, RCC, uh, comprising of a steel um, uh, frame uh, with stay in place PVC wall form. Um, the foundation, as I told you earlier, that um, foundation or uh, substructure is conventional, which is uh, of reinforced concrete RCC. So uh, the code relevant Indian standards will apply on the substructure, including IS 456, <coughs> whereas Superstructure is using, um, uh, you know, uh, steel hot rolled steel built up I sections, and uh, there uh, the code which uh, the Bureau of Indian Standard uh, has a steel code which is IS 800 2007, which uh, which is to be used as a for design basis of uh, these steel frame structure. Also, wherever uh, there are lifts and um, you know stairwells, there RCC shear also uh, being used. 
For foundation, um, you know, you need to ascertain the bearing capacity for which detailed uh, soil investigation is to be carried out. So safe bearing capacity for lighthouse project uh, at Lucknow is uh, 13.3 uh, ton per meter square and depth of the foundation uh, as per the sub uh, surface soil strata is 2.5 uh, meter. Being a high rise structure, uh, here, the, the rough foundation is being proposed and that is to be designed as for IS2950. Uh, as this structure is um, um, high rise, uh, so the wind uh, plays uh, a very important role. So wind load need to be, you know, um, the building need to be designed for wind load. Here, uh, this is on right hand side. What you see is the the, the wind hazard map of India, which is uh, being taken uh, from uh, Vulnerability Atlas of India, uh, published by BMTPC, and uh, this is based on uh, National Building Code uh, 2016. So from this, you can pick up. Uh, um, uh, the wind basic wind speed for the region of Lucknow, which is 50 meter per second. And this uh, basic wind speed is multiplied by several modifiers, which are K1, K2, K3, K4, depending upon the size of the building, depending upon the topography of the region, and depending upon the uh, importance factor. And when these factors multiplied by uh, uh, basic wind speed will give us uh, the, the design wind speed and that design wind speed is converted into a wind pressure as per, uh, you know, Indian standard, which is IS 875 part three. Uh, the, 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 you know, having calculated wind pressure, it can always be converted into, you know, wind loads um, after multiplying this wind pressure with the exposed, um, you know, surface area. And that wind load is uh, applied at each story and then um, structural analysis and design is done. Another important uh, thing uh, is uh, earthquake load. Uh, so Lucknow falls in seismic zone three. So uh, there is again uh, Indian standard 1S 1893 part one 2016, um, which uh, talks about uh, how to calculate design uh, seismic coefficient, uh, original seismic coefficient, and then how to calculate the lateral force for which um, the building will be subjected to during earthquake. And for that lateral load, you need to design your building. So in the right hand side, you see the earthquake hazard map of India and India is divided into four zones, starting from zone uh, two to zone five and uh, Lucknow falls in zone three. And this map is again, um, as um, is taken from uh, vulnerability atlas of India of uh, BMTPC and the same map appears in national building code uh, of 2016. So, uh, you know, um, from 1893, you can take these important factors which are written here, Z is the zone. So depending upon zone, um, you, you, you will find out this chat. So for this uh, um, project or, or for Lucknow, the chat is 0.16. Then the, the, there is a importance factor. There is a response reduction factor. Response reduction factor is, um, you know, um, is used um, for, for, you know, uh, depending upon the, the kind of design you are doing. So here, uh, the building is being designed as a dual system with ductile RCC structural walls and few spatial moment resistant uh, frames in uh, structural steel because uh, in this project primarily the frame is uh, of a steel but uh, uh, wherever we have stair wheels wells and lift wells there we are using uh, rcc shear walls so uh, the building uh, the structure is designed as a dual system with ductile rcc structure wall therefore uh, the response reduction factor is uh, is five so based on these parameters and the ambiguity ratio is 5% and uh, importance factor is taken slightly higher. Um, it is more than one, so it is 1.2. So by multiplying these factors with SA by G, which is a design acceleration coefficient, uh, we get design horizontal seismic coefficient. And this design uh, horizontal seismic coefficient helps us in, in calculating the lit base shear, which, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, calculated by using this formula, AH, AH is that design uh, horizontal seismic coefficient, when this is multiplied by seismic rate, which is essentially the vertical, um, you know, the, which is essentially the weight of the building, it will give you base shear. And so this is, uh, this is that base shear uh, 
uh, to which your building will be subjected to uh, uh, in case of an earthquake. So uh, the, the, the building or the structure need to be designed for this base shear. And this base shear, again, uh, there are formulas given in um, IS-893 is to be distributed depending upon the stiffness uh, uh, of the, each story. It is to be distributed um, you know, at each story and then analysis is being done. Again, analysis, um, uh, what kind of analysis is to be done, whether it is 2D or 3D, or whether it is dynamic or static, and uh, what kind of boundary conditions need to be taken. Um, the, uh, these all things need to be decided uh, in the design basis report. So here, linear dynamic analysis is being carried out with steel columns uh, uh, are assumed as fixed for spatial moment testing frames and pinned for ordinary frames. Um, because we are using here the DEX lab, so rigid diagram action uh, is uh, uh, assumed in horizontal direction at uh, each floor level, and uh, the, the, um, there is a clause for the, uh, the for this, which is given in one eight nine three. When you have a you know long building, the expansion joints are very important because in the event of an earthquake, what happens if the building is long, the, the building will suffer more damages. So you have to break your building, uh, you know, at every thirty meter or every fifteen meter, depending upon your size. So uh, once you break the building into two parts, you have to join those two parts to an expansion joint. So um, here also in this uh, expansion joints are being used as per uh, IS eight hundred. Primarily, this is a steel frame structure. So IS-800 um, is being uh, used for designing and analyzing the building. Uh, also, I want to tell you here that uh, any any important building or any structure which we do or any design which we do need to comply uh, and need to be done uh, through <coughs> various Indian standards. So I have tried to put the list of Indian standards for all of you. Nowadays, uh, these uh, soft <coughs> Sorry. These Indian standards can be downloaded <coughs> online. So for <coughs> so for uh, load calculations, there are uh, um, uh, there, there is an Indian standard IS 85875, which comes in different parts, part one to part five. And uh, part one is uh, you know for dead loads, part two is for um, the, you know live loads, part three is uh, for uh, you know wind load and uh, uh, for earthquake load, there is a separate code 1893. So all these codes need to be referred uh, to calculate the, the, the load which is coming uh, on the building. And based on that load, you need to analyze your building. For steel, because it's a steel structure, there are a whole lot of codes, and um, you know we need to follow these codes religiously whenever uh, we do a project because uh, your uh, structure need to comply with the, the codes which are applicable um, uh, to your project. So the the the, the major. Uh, code which is applicable here is IS 800, uh, which is a um, code for design of a steel structure. Uh, also, there are other codes as well. Um, I would like to mention here IS 4923, um, which is uh, a code for um, hollow steel sections because uh, these the sections which we are uh, using here um, are hollow as well, uh, fabricated I sections. So, um, this code also need to be uh, referred. So, you can see this list. Uh, then uh, for RCC, uh, the most important code is IS456-2000, uh, which uh, guides you about uh, the design uh, and construction methodology when you are doing a building with RCC. And then there are other codes for uh, uh, you know, concrete mix design, for ductile detailing, because uh, India is a seismically prone country, so you have to uh, do the detailing, uh, ductile detailing uh, as per 13920. And there is another code, 4326, uh, which is uh, uh, for earthquake resistant design construction of buildings. Then for foundation, um, here we are using a rough foundation and for rough foundation also um, uh, there is a, a code IS2950 which uh, need to be uh, you know, referred refer to uh, when doing the rough foundation. For other foundations there, there are codes 1080, uh, 1940. 1904. You know, after ascertaining, after this um, design basis, um, the, the model of building is created in a, in a computer. And nowadays, thanks to the, 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 the number of uh, CAD software, computer design softwares available nowadays in the market, uh, such as Stack Pro, ETAPS, Safe, CAP, Abacus, 
and uh, they they all will help you create a 3d 2d model of your building in the in the in the computer and once that 3d model is uh, you know made you then you have to analyze your building that is called a structural analysis and structural analysis is nothing but based on your load calculation you need to find out the forces in each structural elements uh, and then um, once you find out those forces in each structural element those um, structural elements are designed for those forces and these those forces are nothing but your bending moment shear force actual force torsional um, you know torsional for forces and uh, any other uh, force uh, to which your structural element will be subjected to i also would like to mention here that in a typical um, structural analysis you need to have so many load combinations and uh, earthquake load and wind load do, do not act together they one one will act at a time and it can act from any direction so in one direction it will act at, at a time as well see little forces shall be considered acting from all directions but one at a time so if I consider only earthquake load, you will find there are 30 load combinations. And similarly, with wind load, you will have 30 load combinations. So for all these load combinations, you have to uh, carry out the structural analysis. And for the worst possible load combination, you have to design your structural elements. OK? And um, this is a 2D, um, uh, you know, um, 2D uh, view of uh, you know schematic view of uh, your modeled uh, building um, in 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 the software. Yeah, I think they have used uh, safe software here, and um, you know you can carry out depending upon your requirement. You can carry out 2D, 3D um, analysis. Uh, if it is a this kind of structure, then this is 3D. If you use only a frame, then it becomes a 2D analysis. And uh, again, based on your configuration of your building, whether your building is regular, irregular, symmetric. Or unsymmetry IS81893 specifies the kind of analysis you have to carry out. So you can carry out static analysis, you can carry out dynamic analysis, you can carry out linear or um, non-linear analysis. And all these uh, analysis uh, can be carried out through uh, the softwares which I just mentioned. All these things are given in these uh, standards. Also, when uh, after doing the analysis, we need to do the structural design. And nowadays, all these uh, softwares, analysis softwares are well equipped with uh, structural design as per Indian standard. So all you have to do is feed data um, into the into the software or in these CAD softwares and uh, for the worst load combination you will get the structural design done. Um, let me also tell you what does structural design mean. Uh, structural design means the size uh, of your structural components, which I just explained, size of your foundation, size of your beam column, size of your slab. If you are using RCC, then what would be the kind of reinforcement? If you are using a, a you know, steel section, then what should be its um, you know, um, height? What should be section modulus? What should be its depth? Uh, uh, what should be its moment of inertia? All those things uh, can be you know, uh, can be found out uh, through structural design. Okay, and um, normally, um, you know, we do the design. Uh, the design is basically done very comprehensively, and normally, two two kinds of uh, limit states uh, design uh, are are done. One is limit state of collapse, and um, one is limit state of serviceability. Let me just uh, tell you that uh, limited state of collapse means that in, in, in the worst possible scenario, my building should not collapse. So that is called limited state of collapse. In any case, the building uh, should not collapse. And limited state of serviceability means in case of minor earthquakes or in case of minor, um, you know, during the service life of the building, building should always remain serviceable. So that is called limited state of serviceability. So, so, so design is done um, for uh, both the limited state. Also, don't forget, uh, this is a very useful software. And um, as civil engineers and architects, we should also acquire a, a little bit, uh, little knowledge of uh, this software, AutoCAD software, which uh, is used for preparing uh, you know, architectural as well as the structural drives. Now, uh, having explained you the structural system being uh, used, now I will try to explain you through uh, photographs uh, the construction sequence as well as the, 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 the field level implementation of the, the technologies which I just discussed with you. 
Um, any structure is divided into two parts. One is substructure, which is uh, the, 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 the part of the structure below the ground level, which comprises of your uh, foundation and uh, then uh, your you know, column or stem or pedestal up to the ground and the plinth, plinth level beam and over plinth, whatever uh, uh, frame frame you have, whatever walling you have, that is called superstructure. So I'll try to explain you uh, about the foundation being used here with the photographs, and then I will explain you superstructure in terms of uh, structural system, which is nothing but a frame, um, the beam column frame, uh, then uh, floor, and then wall panels. I will also show you a slide of MEP because it's a new technology, how um, you know plumbing and electrical services are uh, done in this kind of system uh, will also be explained to you. Uh, you know, once you do the structural analysis and design, uh, you need to prepare the structural drawings. And so this is a typical uh, foundation uh, layout, which is shown uh, to you here, shown uh, to you all here in this time. And, you know, these are the sections because it's primarily uh, RCC foundation. So this is a foundation layout. And, um, you know, uh, another important thing being new technologies, all these design need to comply uh, to national and international standards and need to be vetted by uh, a third party. And in, in, in this case, the third party is IIT uh, Delhi. So as you can see, this design, um, this design has been approved and vetted by IIT Delhi, and it is good for construction. So before uh, you know, uh, going to the actual construction, you need to refer to this structural drawing, which gives you uh, the, the layout of the uh, you know, foundation. So what you see here, um, uh, these rectangles, these are the, uh, the, the, the foundation. You know, these are the foundation slab. So you have to you know refer this drawing and then carefully do the layout and then uh, you know put the um, you know shuttering for foundation lay the reinforcement with the casting and if you you know cut any section this is the reinforcement which is to be provided so reinforcement has to be strictly provided based on these drawings as you see these dots these are the horizontal uh, reinforcement in both the direction um, uh, and then um, um, the reinforcement in vertical direction need to be put which is to be connected with the, 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 the column uh, reinforcement okay and um, since it is a raft so that for the entire um, you know building uh, the, the raft is being put and these are the locations for the columns okay now, um, another important thing for foundation is that uh, the, the concrete grade. So uh, we are using a very rich uh, specifications uh, for this project. Uh, so for raft foundation, print beam, grade slab, uh, and column up to print level, M25 concrete grade is being used, whereas M30 is being used for shear walls and uh, uh, water tank uh, sewage treatment plant. Um, also, um, as I tell you, that uh, instead of nominal mix, nowadays, uh, mix design is being preferred so for all these concrete gate mix design is normally done and this mix design is again being done by the iit uh, iit or, or or by a third party um, the reinforcement uh, is also very important. So reinforcement uh, strictly confirms to you know IS uh, um, 1786 and nowadays TMT bars are being used of uh, high strength, which is uh, 500 uh, newton per annum square. The concrete mix design uh, is done by IIT Delhi, and uh, as you can see, uh, uh, you know, as against uh, uh, the, the target strength of 30, if you do the mix design, you get a better strength, and uh, you optimize, uh, uh, you know, use of precious materials such as cement and uh, sand and uh, coarse aggregate. Also, fly ash, uh, you know, uh, waste uh, product is being used here. 30% fly ash is uh, uh, being used as cementitious pozzolanic material in case of anti it means that we are replacing 30 per, up to 30 percent cement by this fly ash which is a byproduct of a thermal power plant uh, so uh, cement 30 percent cement is replaced by this fly ash a byproduct of a thermal power plant a base material thereby making a concrete uh, clean and sustainable and uh, it also helps in conserving natural resource which is limestone Cement is based on limestone. Also, you know, target strength, as I told you, as against 30 and 25, we get a target strength of 38 
and uh, 31 uh, newton per mm square or megapascal, which is uh, a notch high than the target strength of 30. So, uh, you know, using less material, you are getting better performance. So that is the uh, advantage of uh, doing mixed design. In earlier times, we used to go for nominal design, but now nominal design uh, uh, is being uh, prohibited by, you know, uh, IS 456, because it says that uh, for lower grade of concrete, M10, M15, you can use nominal mix where you can, you know, um, prescript, you know, by prescriptive ways, you can uh, just mix, um, um, you know, cement and uh, sand and um, coarse aggregate and um, water and uh, do the design. But mixed design is a better and uh, good practice if you want to have, uh, if you want to achieve desired performance of concrete being used. So for foundation, M25 and M30 uh, concrete grade is used based on this mixed design. As I told you that based on that um, structural design, you have to first carry out the layout, um, uh, you know, very precise uh, the layout need to be carried out and for that you need to have a benchmark and from that benchmark you have to uh, carefully mark the labels and once you mark the labels and all, uh, all you have to do the excavation. And uh, after doing this excavation, what you see, uh, these are the, 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 the uh, you know, the center point of the columns. So uh, around this, you will uh, lay your uh, foundation. Okay. And so this is done with the mechanical mechanical excavators. And uh, then, um, you know, uh, these are excavated up to the desired depth of foundation. Once you do the excavation, then just for labeling purposes, because here you are using a raft, so the PCC of 100 mm, which is, uh, uh, which is M10 grade uh, concrete, um, is laid over the entire excavated uh, pit. And then you mark those locations, which I was telling you. This, these are the locations where your uh, foundation, um, uh, you know, foundation um, uh, slab will come and, uh, you know, um, over which uh, your column will uh, Okay, so this this uh, this will be your uh, layout for uh, foundation. Uh, this is how the reinforcement is being placed. So you can see here uh, the marks which I showed you uh, are the marks for those columns. So this is because it is a raft. Raft is a basically it's a continuous um, you know you know continuous footing for the entire um, you know structure. So for each pit, you have this continuous uh, um, you know footing. The entire footing it's a kind of RCC slab, and um, you know the, the entire reinforcement is being placed. And uh, the, the vertical reinforcement which you see here is the the, the reinforcement of the column. The, these columns will come up to the uh, you know plinth, and uh, at plinth they will be connected with the plinth beam, and then the casting will be done. Uh, so so as to have integral. Uh, and what you see here, uh, these uh, are the lift um, uh, and uh, you know uh, staircase wells where, where you are having RCC shear walls. So a uh, few places you have columns and that wherever you have a staircase, you have to have these shear walls. So that is why the reinforcement of this kind is being uh, produced, uh, being uh, put. So once you have done um, uh, another view, um, another view, closer view, all building blocks have a raft foundation. That for a raft foundation is 500 mm thick with M25 uh, concrete, and uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, because a staircase and lift wells attract more load, and so they are designed for uh, much heavier load than the the rest of the structure. So here the raft is raised by another uh, 400 mm. So that is why you see wherever there is a lift well or a staircase well, uh, the, the rough thickness is increased by another 400 uh, mm. This shows you the column. So once you have laid the, the, the reinforcement cage for uh, uh, your raft, then you, you know, this, this is a um, shuttering for the column. So this uh, shuttering for the column is being done. And then, um, you know, uh, these columns and uh, raft foundation, uh, which is already, uh, um, you know, put over this, the, the concrete is being poured and uh, these columns are cast up to the plinth level. Okay, so first you you know cast the raft, and after raft uh, casting, you put the the, the there, there is always um, already reinforcement cage is already uh, you know put and uh, connected with the raft, and then you put the shuttering for the uh, um, uh, columns, these columns which will uh, terminate at the uh, plinth level, and then you do the, the, the concrete pouring here. Okay, and once the reinforcement is uh, put, and then you deshutter it. So you can see on the left hand side these are the finished columns okay and here the the, the concreting is being uh, done uh, at present 
once you have done the the concreting then you have to you know do the backfilling because the you have to backfill the entire area and again backfilling is done uh, following the proper procedure as laid down in uh, uh, indian standards and as per contract conditions so backfilling is also very important because during backfilling um, if you don't do proper backfilling at a later stage your building may settle because the the the, 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 the backfilling may, may uh, uh, you know settle at a later stage when um, when come when it comes uh, you know um, uh, in contact with water so what you have to do you have to do the back layer uh, back filling layer by layer you have to put a layer then you have to uh, put some sprinkle some water then you have to compact it and then you have to put uh, another layer so proper compaction um, in, in in layers of 200 mm uh, you have to do and uh, uh, you have to do that back filling after doing uh, back filling the, the the foundation we won't be able to see the rough which we have put with so much of reinforcement all you have to all uh, all you see is the these columns and uh, this is your plinth level now over this the uh, your uh, the casting of plinth uh, beam will take place which i will show you in the next slide so you see here um, having those columns uh, done um, you will put the reinforcement cage for uh, uh, plinth and you will put the shuttering and then you will do the concreting here so the, right now the shuttering uh, shuttering or shuttering um, it, it is also known as form work so the plinth form work is being uh, um, uh, done here with it so what you do first you put the form work then you put the reinforcement cage okay and over this um, plinth beam this plinth beam is also of rcc over this the steel column will come so now you have two different materials one is uh, rcc and one is steel so how do you connect rcc with the steel for that you need to put a base plate okay so this base plate is uh, you know uh, uh, connected with the steel column with the steel column and with the plinth beam uh, uh, with anchor bolts okay so these are those anchor bolts and uh, this is a template which is shown here through this template these anchor bolts are um, you know uh, inserted and then they are cast uh, in situ with the the plinth beams and uh, then later a base plate is put and over which uh, your you know your column will be erected through metal bolts so again let me explain you that uh, you have a rough foundation then you have a rcc column and when we come at the plinth level we put the plinth beam and then we fix the anchor bolts and uh, the, these anchor bolts are again very important because you you know the entire building is uh, dependent on uh, how do you fix this anchor bolt the uh, anchor bolts with foundation and your superstructure so substructure that is the foundation and your uh, superstructure or the steel columns are connected with these uh, anchor bolts so these anchor bolts are uh, need to be properly designed um, how many bolts are required what is the depth of the bolt and uh, what is the diameter of the nut and the diameter of anchor all these things need to be designed as per relevant indian uh, standards okay so once you have reached this with the base plate anchor bolt you will put a uh, column uh, and column you know it is again uh, fabricated in the factory it will come uh, with the base plates so all you have to do you have to put erect that column with the base plate uh, and these anchor bolts and just do the nut nut bolt the kind of thing so you see here so this is another picture uh, which shows you the finished uh, um, you know plinth beam along with the column and the raft which you see here and this is that uh, base plate so anchor here anchor bolts have been cast with concrete at the plinth uh, level and over this your uh, built up fabricated built up hot rolled steel uh, section which is done in the factory of beam and column will come from the factory and it will be just erected over this okay and um, you can see uh, what you see here is uh, those uh, staircase walls which i was telling you because here we are keeping um, rcc um, steel uh, beams and columns but for uh, lift wells um, and for staircase wells we are using rcc chair wall so that is why this same reinforcement is being continued here and we are making the rcc uh, shear wall here so but again because a lot of concrete is being used and whenever we are using uh, concrete for mass applications it is always advisable to uh, put uh, um, at the site a batching plant and batching plant uh, if i have to tell you in a simple language is a uh, industrialized and automated way uh, to produce uh, concrete with the desired uh, 
performance. So uh, this is the, the one of the best practices which is to be used and uh, now it is being used in all the projects. And through this, what you see here, um, um, it is a silo in which the material is being put. And uh, you know to, through this weighing uh, exact quantity of material is mixed and then uh, the concrete is being made. Okay, and um, the batching plant ensure uh, the desired quality um, of your concrete, uh, which you are going to use, and it also helps in resource efficiency and optimizing use of different precious building materials. Also, the, whenever you use uh, the concrete uh, at such a mass scale, you have to ensure the, the quality of concrete. And quality of concrete can be ascertained, uh, you know, uh, by, uh, you know, uh, by conducting a test of compressive strength. Suppose you are using a um, M30 and M25 here, so the, the uh, cube strength of concrete has to be uh, more than 25 if it is M25. So these cubes are cast, cast at the site and then later they are tested for their compressive strength and uh, also for uh, water cement ratio and for uh, um, workability and flowability and uh, to understand the, you know, the permeability of concrete, you need to carry out the slum test. So this is called slum test, uh, uh, which is being conducted at the site. So these tests are very important, which need to be done whenever you do um, a concreting or whenever um, you do any major work at the site, um, uh, you, you need to cast the cubes, you need to see this one and then record it properly so that uh, the quality is assured. Also, um, in RCC, the, one component is concrete, another component is steel. So, um, to ensure uh, the quality of the steel, you need to first see the, the manufacturer certificate, and then a uh, few specimen of steel being produced by these manufacturers need to be, um, you know, given for testing uh, to to third party, um, to any academic institution or any test lab, and they will carry out the, 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 the tests which are given in Indian standard. So, it, it is a typical uh, test certificate of a reinforcement which is being used in this project. And as you can see, first and foremost uh, thing is the chemical composition of the steel which you are using. So, you know, the, there is a Indian standard IS-228 which gives you that what should be the chemical uh, composition, permissible chemical composition of, uh, of the steel bar which is you, you, you are using. So, steel is nothing but um, uh, carbon. So, percentage carbon uh, along with other uh, material like iron, magnesium, zinc, titanium, phosphorus, that percentage, permissible percentage can be calculated and it has to comply with that code. Further, uh, there are codes one um, IS, IS uh, 1786, which gives you, um, and uh, IS uh, 1608, which talks about tensile strength, its density, its yield strength, and elongation is also important when you talk about seismic strength. So all these, um, you know, the tests are to be conducted as a third party also, and they need to comply. So this sheet is also very important, um, you know, in addition to manufacturer certificate, where which you get when you buy steel, uh, you need to carry out on, um, you know, random samples, you need to conduct these uh, tests uh, through third party and get these test certificates. And then you um, need to ensure that uh, the, the seal which you are using uh, is complying, is conforming to the, the, the relevant Indian standards. Now um, that was that was uh, that was all about uh, foundation, and as I told you, that in foundation primarily we are using uh, uh, RCC, so IS four five six uh, is being used, and above plinth we are uh, using a frame of steel. And um, this is, uh, so it is just a schematic diagram just to show you, this is a, a 3D model. If you see, this is a 3D model and uh, you know, uh, this is that uh, steel structure which we'll, we'll be using uh, in this project. So uh, again, as you can see, once you come to the foundation grid, over the base plate, you will erect these columns, which are of steel, these vertical members are columns and these horizontal members are beams. So these columns and beams are fabricated in the factory and then transport it to the site and then you know with alignment they are erected and then connected together uh, with the uh, you know nut and bolt systems and once you erect them then you have to do the slab and then you have to do the warning system which i will explain you in uh, slides uh, in subsequent slides also right now the the, the lucknow project uh, is at this stage at the foundation stage this stage has not come so i can't show you uh, the actual uh, pictures of uh, erection of the columns but i will try to explain uh, you uh, you through diagrams uh, the, the various kind connections uh, of uh, and uh, various connections and uh, various structural lines okay 
Uh, also, let me also tell you one more thing that um, if you compare a steel structural system with RCC structure, well, there is one very important thing that steel uh, performs very, uh, very good as uh, for seismic resistance is concerned. Also, the compressive strength as well as tensile strength of steel is, uh, um, you know, good. Whereas in RCC, you know, concrete cannot take any tension, whereas steel uh, can take tension as well. So it offers ductility, so it's, it performs better when, uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, the higher windows or uh, whether it comes to seismic resistance. Only important thing which is to be seen here is the connections. How do you connect column to column, how do you connect column to bow, um, beam, and how do you connect slab to, uh, uh, you know, uh, beam column. Uh, so all these joints need to be properly engineered, detailed, so as to have monolithic structure. Again, the philosophy of any building construction is that your entire structure uh, should act together in the event of any, in any, any earthquake or any other uh, external uh, load. So integral action can be achieved by properly uh, detailing uh, your joints. So let me come uh, to the structural system. So first uh, slide, which is very important in this case, is the details of anchor. So uh, because right now the, the, this stage has not come in Lucknow project, so I just want to show you this uh, structural drawing, which shows you the anchor board. So this is your anchor board. So it's dia. What height? You know, what is the length which should uh, which uh, should go in the foundation? This edge, and what is the the threaded anchor, which uh, should be above plane, is uh, uh, T, and there is a table. Again, this table uh, is, uh, you know, arrived at uh, after doing proper calculations for all those load combination and for those desired loads. So, um, these these are the kind of uh, the boards which are being used: uh, 16 mm to 30 mm dia. So, this height. You know, as per this table, suppose you are using 24 um, mm anchor bolt, so uh, the anchor uh, should be inserted into the foundation up to 600 mm. So 600 mm should be this height, and you know, to provide proper anchorage, if you leave it as it is, you know, in the event of overturning, this will simply come out. So you have to give a 90 degree bend. So this 90 degree bend is very important, although it may look to you a trivial thing. But this is very important, and this band need to be provided with the sufficient uh, um, length, which is denoted as H. So this H, suppose 24 mm dia anchor, we are asking, we are talking about. So this is around 100. So 100 mm um, band, and then this is around 600 meter, and uh, above plinth you have this uh, thickness, uh, this length, which is 100. And over this, your threaded nut and bolt will come. So this this is your foundation, which I simply explained to you. This is your RCC column, and here you have a raft. So over raft, you have RCC column, and in RCC column, you have this anchor boards, and here you have that base plate. So this base plate comes, uh, you know, uh, fabricated with the R, uh, you know, steel column which you are fabricating in the factory. All you have to do is you have to erect the column with base plate, uh, you know, uh, putting, uh, you know, the, that base plate into the anchors and the uh, nut bolt. Okay, and um, uh, already there are sleeves, um, you know, cast in the in the in the in the uh, columns below the foundation, revolution, and then the grouting is done um, here as well. So if you see the section, so this is that uh, column section which are I section, and these are the the bolts which are being put. So this is a typical base plate detail having four bolts and um, you know um, anchor bolts and base plate and uh, as i told you this is also very important so this is rcc then you have a base plate and over which you put a um, steel column uh, connected uh, through anchor bolts and base plate which is very important in this case because yeah, this is the connection uh, which will uh, decide uh, the performance of your building so if you connect it loosely your building may overturn and uh, fall then uh, whenever you're doing a steel uh, connections, very important is uh, how do you connect beam to beam? How do you connect beam to column? And uh, uh, how do you connect beam slab, uh, beam to slab uh, and column? 
So uh, suppose uh, you have to connect column to column uh, because columns, uh, it's a high rise structure. It's, uh, you know, 11 story structure. So you can't have a column length of 11 uh, millimeter. Here the column height is six meter. So once you, six meter is done, you have to connect it with another column. So how do you connect both the columns so as to maintain continuity uh, without sacrificing any structural um, integrity? Uh, so what you do is, uh, this is the detail which is given. Uh, what you have to do is you have to connect the columns, columns, you have to connect the columns through nut and bolts, both in the flange portion at the end at the web portion. See, I section has two things. This is called uh, flange and this is called web. So uh, when you connect column to column, you have to connect through nut and bolts and uh, through uh, plates, um, you know, at the web level as well as at the flange level. Okay, then uh, wherever you have a uh, you have a shear RCC wall, and uh, if a steel beam is um, uh, getting fixed with the shear wall, so the, the their detail is given here. If you can see here, so what is being done? Um, you have to insert. You know, while doing the casting, you have to insert a, a, a plate, um, a, a plate, a steel plate in the RCC shear wall. So this is that plate which is shown, and this um, plate is cast uh, during concreting uh, during costing of the wall and this plate is connected through lug bars. So these are called lug bars. So there are three lug bars which are put like this. Um, so in, and then insert plate is put and when a steel beam uh, comes here, this steel uh, um, you know beam is connected with this steel plate through nut and bolt connections. Okay, so again uh, there will be anchors, there will be a base plate here, there will be a plate here, there will be a plate here and both these plates uh, will join this shear wall with uh, this uh, be. So all these connections, as I told you, there are a number of connections, so all typical uh, connections uh, occurring in your structure. Again, these are project specific. They need to be designed and detailed like this, that what is the kind of base plate you have to use? What is the thickness of this base plate? What kind of, um, you know, the bolts you require? What should be the dia? How, how much, uh, uh, you know, length uh, to, uh, of this anchor bolt should go inside the, 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 the beam or a shear wall, inside the, the, the concrete wall, all these things are pre-decided. And then number of um, you know, nuts and bolts are also to be designed. And uh, wherever you have a steel to steel section, you can uh, do the welding as well. Okay. Then typical uh, beam column uh, connections because it, it is a steel structure in um, reinforced concrete. You know, if you make a monolithic joint, so that joint acts as a um, you know rigid joint, and uh, you know it, it helps uh, in transferring your fracture and shear forces very well because monolithicity is achieved. In case of uh, steel structure, you have to design uh, your uh, steel uh, connections uh, for shear and moment so that they become shear and movement connection. So um, if you want to uh, have a shear connection, and then this kind of detailing is uh, done where steel beam is connected to the column through a cleat angle. So if there is one angle, which is, um, you know, in the web portion of uh, be, uh, beam and web, the cleat angle is fixed in a web of column and beam. And then uh, through this cleat, um, the, you know, uh, through nut and bolts, uh, this steel beam is fixed with this. So this is called a shear connection, which will help in transferring the shear uh, from, um, you know, the, uh, the beam to a column and then uh, to the foundation. Okay, and uh, this is the view of this. You can see here. So this is a cleat. This is a, a section of a, a column, and then this, uh, this is how um, beam and column are being connected. Similarly, if you want to have a moment connection, then you have to fix it not only at the the web portion but also at the flange portion. So this is how the connection takes takes place. And if you See its uh, view. Uh, the view is, uh, you know, uh, you, you have um, to connect it at the flange and beam, and the flange and the web with this kind of uh, nut and bolt uh, system. Okay, and um, uh, when we talk about these nut bolts, because a lot of steel structure, steel uh, connections are being used, nuts are being used, so majority of uh, you know steel being used. So structural steel material specification is very important here, and it has to comply uh, with the. Uh, 
uh, relevant Indian standards. So uh, IS 800 is the Bible for steel um, uh, construction, design and uh, design and construction of the steel structure. Uh, in addition to that, there are a number of codes uh, which talk about material quality, testing, surface con conditions, um, you know, what kind of product treatment is required, how to do, what are the tolerances when you are doing the fabrication of steel structure, um, what kind of tolerances are required uh, when you are doing the erection of uh, steel structure. So for all these, you have Indian standards which are being written here. And, uh, you know, when you are using a, a steel section with particular, uh, you know, strength of particular strength of, uh, you know, there will be a yield strength, there will be a tensile strength. So all connection plates and base plates shall uh, shall have to equally match the strength of the steel section which you are using. Okay, uh, so then we have to keep in mind the 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 the, the, the structural uh, properties of the base plates and all the connections, including nut and bolts, which we are using, and that uh, they, they, they they should be as per the standards and as per the design requirements. Okay, and uh, because these connections are entirely based on uh, bolts, so higher high strength bolts uh, of uh, grade 10.9, uh, 8.8. Um, uh, again, there is an Indian standard on that. So that high strength bolts need to be used, uh, um, you know, as per IS 1367, okay? Uh, then um, the, the, the connection, uh, the, the, there is another steel, uh, the, for the steel connections, there, there is a code IS 814, uh, which uh, uh, says that the joint shall be prepared in accordance with uh, IS 184. Whenever you are doing welding, so for welding also, there is uh, the IS 4353, and what kind of welding you have, to, you have to use, what should be the thickness of that weld, welding, uh, all these things need to be uh, done through uh, these Indian standards, okay? And uh, whenever you are doing a steel um, um, uh, erection of the steel structure, where it is very important to do the temporary shoring or uh, you know bracing or uh, bracing because they, they all of a sudden your when you are erecting a column it should not uh, fall so you have to do draw, uh, temporary bracing which which is uh, nothing but providing a lateral uh, support to the structure and um, so that is also need to be kept in mind while doing the erection that is why trained skilled workforce is uh, required Okay, and fabrication of uh, these building components uh, are done in the factory under control condition. Then they are stacked. Then from stacking, they are uh, you know loaded into a truck or in a transport, and then transported to the side, uh, and then uh, need to be properly erected before erection. They have to be you know stacked, clearly marked, properly marked in the ground and arranged so that um, you know you you know erect the column uh, where it is required. Okay, also being a steel uh, thing, you have to avoid uh, moisture, uh, ingress of moisture, and uh, you have to you know, the, follow the, the, the protocols as far as stacking, erection, transportation, and assembly is being concerned. Also, one very important thing is, uh, you know, handling. Handling of these components uh, need to be done under a trained uh, workforce, and uh, any component should not suffer any damage or distortion in, uh, during transportation or during erection. Okay, um, uh, now, um, you know, um, I already told you that any steel work damage during offloading, transportation, uh, storage or erection, and uh, uh, if at all uh, there is any damage, then it should be restored to confirm to IS. Uh, there is another standard that in case of offloading, if there is some damage, how do you restore it to its original uh, form um, in, in terms of uh, structural properties that can be done through a uh, uh, code. Also, uh, whenever you are doing bolts um, and all, you need to put those bolts properly in the concrete. So you have to do the grouting. So special grouting arrangements need to be done. Alignment um, and you know plumb labels are to be you know adequately done. And uh, you know just by immediately doing grouting because uh, that is done with uh, uh, with concrete, you just uh, immediately can't use. You have to you know allow grout to set, and then you have to you know clean up um, you know uh, base plate etc so that uh, and then only you can erect the, the, the columns okay the next part once you have erected the beam column um, frame then you have to put a uh, slab or a flow so here in uh, specific to this lighthouse related Lucknow, we are using deck slab or it is called a composite slab and deck slab if you can see here this is the profile so this is a deck sheet 
So deck sheet. So first, once you you know um, put the the um, uh, you know steel frame, and then over that steel frame uh, there are beams um, at the interval. Then you put a uh, this deck sheet. So this is a deck sheet which is a um, you know steel sheet of 0.9 mm which is placed all over the floor. And um, this acts as a reinforce. You know, this acts as a formwork, or it acts as a shuttling as well. And over this, you put a nominal reinforcement, and then then you do the uh, you know uh, screed screed concrete screed of uh, seventy five mm uh, is done, and the, the grade of concrete uses m twenty five. So um, over the you know um, steel structure frame, what you do, you lay this 0.9 mm uh, uh, profile sheet, uh, which is a steel sheet um, uh, with required bearing on uh, the beams, and then over that you put a um, you know reinforcement and do the concrete screen. And uh, this uh, reinforcement and um, uh, concrete screen is designed because it is of concrete as per IS 456, and then this uh, deck slab is to be designed. Uh, as uh, per IS 800. Okay, normally because you are, it's again an innovative method uh, because you are using a steel frame with this deck slab, so it can be done very fast. And um, you, you know, because of this uh, um, um, composite slab, uh, you require a very nominal thickness of concrete, and uh, the reinforcement requirement is also nominal. This reinforcement is, uh, you know, as per design, if you go, uh, reinforcement is uh, required just to arrest shrinkage and uh, shrinkage uh, and uh, cracking. Okay, so very nominal enforcement is required. So uh, you you gain a um, uh, lot of um, you, you know there is a lot of cost saving um, when you do this kind of uh, tax run. Okay, um, let me just uh, very quickly tell you about uh, the, the sequence in which uh, the, the construction and installation is being done. So first, you lay the foundation. Uh, once you have reached the foundation, um, you know at the plinth level, uh, you need to transport uh, the steel. You know concurrently, you can uh, ask the, uh, the, the 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 factories to to you know fabricate uh, wall panels as well as steel sections for you. So once you reach at the plinth level, you uh, start transporting those uh, you know wall panels and the steel sections uh, at the at the the project site okay and uh, then start erecting these uh, column uh, you know framing system which i just explained you once you have erected these um, uh, built up sections then you have to put that uh, uh, decking sheet um, you have to uh, you know install the decking sheet and uh, then you do the you have to do the concrete screen with the so your entire structure is ready except fixing of wall panel now at this stage you will start fixing the pvc wall panels which are again made in the factory so first you erect the skeleton of your structure which comprises of uh, built up steel sections okay so beam column uh, built up beam columns are erected and then they are uh, connected as per the connection details uh, which i just showed you and then all the floors are laid uh, the floors which are uh, deck floors comprising of profile sheet with nominal reinforcement and screen having done that um, you know after uh, curing uh, of those um, slab uh, what is remaining you have to fill these walls so these walls are filled with this pre-finished pvc wall panels which is an innovative technology and these panels come up to a uh, story height and you have to what you have to do in each 300 mm um, you know white panel you have to put side by side and they are um, you know they have tongue and groove system they can be simply slid in one over one over other and to create an entire wall Okay, and these uh, wall panels have um, you know pre-punched holes, which which are uh, used for uh, you know um, providing services, service conduits for electricity, water, and plumbing. Uh, okay, and uh, because these are hollow panels, depending upon your requirement, you have to lay the uh, reinforcement, vertical and horizontal reinforcement, and do the concreting, which may be lightweight or or uh, uh, you know lightweight concrete or a uh, normal concrete. Okay, um, this is again very important, and uh, this is again an innovative way, um, which is uh, shown here. How do we connect uh, your PVC because it's a PVC wall panel, which is again made in the factory? This is your slab, this is a deck slab, which com comprises of a deck sheet and then a concrete sheet. How these the PVC wall panels are connected uh, with uh, uh, your, uh, you know, structural frame is shown here. And again, the bottom line or the philosophy here is we have to achieve 
um, you know, structural integrity and monolithic behavior, so that uh, because so that the load, uh, you know, the, 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 the joint connections uh, behave, uh, uh, you know, transfer shear and uh, you know bending moment uh, safely. Okay, so this is how it is being connected. You can see um, do double wars from the, this is a double wall which comes from the bottom floor and it goes into this uh, uh, PVC wall um, through the cavity through the cavities, it goes into this uh, um, uh, wall form. Uh, wall form. Similarly, um, you know, uh, uh, then uh, this uh, uh, double wall internal surface of the wall is connected through angle. So this is that angle. Um, uh, this angle is connected uh, with this wall. So, so from uh, this floor, this PVC wall form is connected through this double wall. And um, you know, at the, the the floor level, at the the, the roof level of this floor, um, you know, uh, you you put. Uh, uh, angle uh, in the in the prof um, uh, deck sheet and uh, then through a hex which is shown here through this nut and screw system you connect this angle uh, with the uh, with the pattern okay and uh, you uh, you can see here uh, this wall panel on upper floors uh, are aligned through edge trim there is a um, the edge trim this is called edge trim through which uh, this wall panel is aligned here this is aligned like this and then on a uh, there is a track PVC track over which this panel is uh, laid. So what you are doing here is you you are taking this door and uh, through these cavities you are connecting this wall panel and to have a proper alignment here you have a edge trim and then through uh, here you put an angle and this angle and edge trim are uh, connected uh, together through a hex and this is a kind of nut bolt so that this is properly aligned and similarly that uh, the same thing is repeated for the um, uh, other floors so this is how uh, the PVC wall is connected with the steel uh, frame and so you get a proper smooth surface uh, here um, uh, this is just, uh, this is not from the project side, but uh, from another project side, this is how it is being fixed, you can see here, and um, um, uh, this is that the steel uh, frame, and here you are fixing those uh, walls here. Now, um, the major question is about uh, services. How do you put services, uh, doors and windows? So services lines are uh, fixed uh, inside the wall panels as shown here. And you so before doing the concreting with maybe lightweight concrete or uh, proper uh, other concrete, uh, uh, you can put uh, the service lines here and wherever you have electrical connections or fan boxes need to be put, there are those openings uh, maybe cut in the PVC wall form. And uh, uh, you can get it uh, customized. You can get it cut in the factory or you can cut it here with the, with the help of uh, equipment okay so these all services will go inside these cavities and wherever you want to have a cut you can have cut to incorporate services and for uh, um, you know fixing door and windows what you have to do is you have to cut through the pvc the um, pvc wall form and before doing the, the the concreting you have to put the capping panels capping panels are fixed um, on, on so that uh, and then over that you have to put this uh, uh, door and window frame and then um, you have to do the the concreting once concreting is uh, done and then you have to remove this uh, wooden frame and then fix your um, door and window frame. Uh, okay, uh, so that's how it is being done. And uh, wherever you have joints and all these things, because uh, these are joints where you know no, um, normal concrete cannot uh, go, so uh, you have to uh, put a self compacting concrete. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you have to put, and uh, this is how uh, it's being put. And here also, uh, self compacting concrete is being put uh, with the help of boom pump and uh, with a 50 mm dia hose. Okay, the, 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 the advantage of self compacting concrete is there is no need to uh, do the compaction or vibration here, and it's a flowable uh, concrete. And uh, you know, this pours because it's a three meter height, so at a time you do a pour of one meter and then another meter and then another meter. Okay, and um, the curing requirement is also not there because this concrete is encased between this PVC wall form. And, and this is a pre finished wall. Once you do the concreting, this wall is ready to use because it is a finished wall. This is how um, cutting uh, is taking place. Uh, you can see, so uh, you can just uh, by you know chasing and uh, you can cut a groove here, and then you can put a uh, electrical box. And this is how you, you can see from here. You can't make out uh, the, uh, the the the, the the system used in reading, so you can fix um, any kind of sanitary plumbing uh, uh, things uh, in uh, in these buildings as you do in uh, conventional structure. So this is just a walkthrough of our Lucknow project. So once the project is complete with all uh, finishing items, which include uh, press steel door frame, the flush doors and PVC doors, um, there are vitrified files. The project will look like this. Uh, okay and. Uh, 
this is a walkthrough of the entire project. Um, as I told you that um, uh, in addition to the innovative construction system, which I just explained to you, it's a hybrid system of the steel, um, steel structure frame with PVC, stay in place PVC wall form uh, for wall panels. Um, the other um, infrastructure facilities are also using some of the sustainable practices such as uh, solar uh, street uh, light system, uh, STP, um, uh, then uh, rainwater harvesting, uh, uh, then provisions for firefighting, uh, then um, uh, you know solid waste management. Okay. Uh, these are few uh, finished buildings with PVC wall forms uh, across uh, the world, but uh, here in India, this PVC wall form uh, in its present form uh, is used for the first time for such a, uh, for such a mass application. Uh, you being technography, you, you all have uh, the, the, your email ID and the password uh, from the ministry. Uh, so you can um, access the technography section uh, from uh, by accessing this gstcindia.gov.in uh, website and uh, you can see the live status of the project. Right now, when I talk to you, the project is at a foundation stage and then we um, start erecting the columns and uh, doing the slab and uh, you know fixing up of stay in place. I will uh, um, uh, give another lecture on uh, you know how the, these things are taking place with actual site photographs. Uh, in case of any uh, query or in case of any uh, doubts, you can uh, contact us uh, at Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, or you can write to me as well on this. Uh, uh, following uh, email, which is sk at the bmtpc.org. Thank you.